I'm going to have to probably bounce back and forth between uh, my terminal, PHP Storm, and a few things. So, um, but hi, my name is Will. Uh, this is the Doxel for Local Development Talk. Who am I? My name is Will Jackson. I'm a Drupal engineer at Canopy Studios. I've been a web developer for over 15 years. Um, my D.O. profile is W. Jackson, uh, Will Jackson on GitHub, and Will Jackson 00 on the Twitterverse. So we're going to start off just what is Doxel? Doxel is a tool for um, defining, managing, building uh, local web development environments. Uh, it uses Docker, Docker and Docker Compose uh, to kind of wire everything together. Um, it allows uh, for you to have your entire configuration for your environment uh, baked right into uh, code so that it can be easily version controlled for better distribution. Um, a lot of tools come pre-baked into Doxel, so you have to install them on your computer, things like um, you know, SAS, uh, Drush, uh, you know, pretty a lot of tools that you're gonna be using uh, quite often, uh, Drupal Console, I'm gonna name another one. Um, but a ton of tools come baked right into it. Um, it also handles uh, automatic virtual host configuration. So if you're dealing with um, traditional servers or even Docker and Docker Compose, uh, where you have to man maintain um, you know, some sort of configuration and routing for uh, ports to get to uh, specific projects. Uh, Doxel handles that for you. Um, yeah, and it's also really extendable. So you can use a bunch of custom commands, uh, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, um, to look and to basically wire in uh, any project that you have existing uh, in with, with Doxel. No matter how custom it is, you can bake that into uh, Doxel commands and um, you know, further automate your environments. So why do we want to use Doxel? Uh, big thing is just fast project onboarding. Uh, so, you know, new developer comes into a project, you want them to be able to spin up as fast as possible. Uh, so Doxel, you know, allows it to where a developer can just pull down the code uh, and with a few things pre-configured, uh, they can uh, pretty much just start up their sites right away uh, and automate the entire um, site building process. So, you know, collecting the database, collecting file assets, um, you know, setting uh, development variables, things like that. Um, you can just have that um, scripted right into the uh, initialization process for Doxel. Um, another thing is just really effective sandboxing. So, if you're uh, familiar with the Docker uh, world, being able, or containers specifically, um, being able to compartmentalize work and stuff into uh, a container is really nice uh, because, you know, after a project is uh, over and um, you move on, you want to be able to, you know, know that you're removing all project assets that were related to that project so it's not, uh, you know, taking up extra space in your computer or um, take up any resources that you could be otherwise using on another project. Um, another thing is it's really customizable for pretty much any web development project. Uh, it's compatible with Mac, Windows, Linux. Uh, so I mean, pretty much every single um, development platform that you would be using uh, would, would support that um, and, well, in most cases. Uh, but Mac, Windows, Linux, I mean, that's the, the main three. So um, it does have support for Drupal, obviously. Um, that's why we're talking about it at our SC Doug group meeting. Uh, also WordPress and many more uh, popular web application projects uh, right out of the box. So uh, installing Doxel, it's really, really simple. Um, in most cases uh, for Linux and Mac, um, you have a few other options here, but in most cases just curl git.doxel.io, you know, uh, pipe it in the SH and you'll be good to go. Um, Linux, uh, that is using native Docker. So you would just install Docker and Docker Compose, or just Docker and um, Doxel will handle the rest. Uh, with Mac and Windows, um, you do have the option to use uh, Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows, but it's more rec it's better recommended to use the uh, VM for perform performance sake. Uh, but there's basically a really thin VM that sits, um, you know, it's run with uh, uh, VirtualBox, um, and then so that it just has you know your Linux kernel and um, and the base installation there. Um, but very thin and it's very performant too. So we recommend going with the uh, virtual machine route uh, with installing Doxel. Uh, if you're also using Vagrant, so we've had a lot of uh, people ask, or uh, we've, we've worked on a lot of projects where uh, Vagrant is being used uh, from the, um, you know, by a, by a client or it's already being used on another project somewhere. Uh, and if you're trying to install Vagrant on a machine with Doxel, sometimes there are some issues. We actually wrote a, a blog post at Canopy 
um, detailing that installation process. There's a full tutorial there. It's actually a pretty, pretty simple thing to go and uh, fix that, but uh, it's, it's a pretty common issue that we're running into, running Vagrant and Doxel together on the same machine. Um, it's a really simple fix. We have the uh, link here and we can share that after the uh, presentation. So uh, I guess getting started into what does Doxel look like? How do we use it? Um, most everything you're done is doing is through the fin command. Uh, the fin command, uh, here's just a, a screenshot of the help that comes with this. Um, and we can see a few commands here, um, you know, being able to pull in logs or execute bash commands to specific containers. Uh, you can do that with Doxel. Um, also Drush, you know, Drush, like I mentioned, is baked right into uh, Doxel, uh, as well as Drupal console. Um, and then now platform terminus is built into it. Uh, there's the WordPress CLI plugin. So if you're using a WordPress site or you support some WordPress sites, uh, it works well with that too. Um, uh, Composer, uh, and then Docker and Docker Compose, obviously you can pass that through and just run native uh, Docker and Docker Compose commands too. Um, further down here, we have a few more commands here, just uh, init is a common pro, this is actually a custom command, but um, this is typically what you're going to do to initialize a project. Um, it's not always included with a Doxel project. Uh, by default, it's not, but it is very common. So you, if you clone a Doxel project off the internet, you're likely going to have this init command uh, that's included. And see, it's also mentioned or listed down here too. Um, add-ons. So Doxel supports a number of add-ons, things that uh, you might not necessarily use every day, but you would definitely want to use when in a pinch, something like uh, PHP MyAdmin. Um, you would want to use that, or you could use the add-on uh, command to install that in just one quick command. Um, it installs it on a project level, so you can recommit that back to the project if you like, or you can just not commit the code um, if you would not want to use that. Um, aliases, so being able to track aliases similar to like Drush aliases, you know, think those um, is what a Doxel alias is. So that way you can um, either script with Doxel or use that uh, from anywhere on your machine um, without having to be... Uh, Docker. Looks like we got another another joiner here. Hey, it's Chris. You made it. So yeah, um, yeah. Continuing on, um, just this, these are some of the basic commands that you would use with Doxel. Um, and yeah, I guess here is where I want to get into my demo. Uh, we have the option to create a new project with Doxel. Um, and this is a screenshot from that, but actually I will go into um, just doing that. So let me go back one directory. And uh, here, as we mentioned, fin project create. Uh, and we'll just walk through that. And actually, let me make this a little larger too so we can all see. So fin project create. And give a project a name. So we'll just be really clever and call it Doxel. Uh, we'll get an option to um, you know, install one PHP based uh, CMS. So this is gonna be a new project. Uh, we're gonna select Dr Drupal 8 uh, since this is a Doug group meeting, but um, you see there's also the composer version of Drupal 8, uh, Drupal 7, WordPress, Magento, uh, a Laravel project. Um, and we also have other things too that are not PHP based. So we have Hugo, which is a Go-based application. Uh, Gatsby JS, which is a, a really fun uh, static site builder uh, that uh, uses JavaScript so you can build a site there. Or just a static HTML site. And uh, essentially what this will do is it will uh, pre-install a bunch of containers with your project that will be needed. So like a, a Drupal site would have a MySQL container where a Gatsby JS or an HTML site would not. Uh, that's an optional thing. You can also always add it later. Uh, but we'll select Drupal 8 for this demo. Um, in this case, it'll just say this is where it's going to create my directory. Uh, that's the software that's going to use Drupal 8. Uh, the project URL will just be doxel.doxel because I was really clever with my naming conventions. And here, so now what it's doing is it's going to clone the repository and this is just a, a git clone that it's grabbing. Uh, it is checking to see if the containers are there. They're not since this is a new project uh, and then it's going to create them. Um, in this case, and this is actually part of the this waiting 10 seconds for container to start, this is uh, part of the custom commands for initializing and building the site uh, initially. Uh, so in this case, you know, waiting 10 seconds for the MySQL database to uh, initialize. Uh, that's also part of the script. Um, and then we're going to initialize the site. So it's going to create a settings out local.php for us. Um, and then uh, it's going to, um, this is, since it's a new site, a new project, it's going to first drop all the tables from the database, and then uh, even though there's nothing there, uh, it's still just part of the Drupal installation process, but, um, but then once that's done, it's going to go through the install step. 
So as we can see now, the project is done. It took uh, 22 seconds or so to get started. And we have this URL, doxel.doxel, which I will open up. And we can see, hey, it's my Drupal 8 site. So that looks great. And if we, you know, see if we do, um, if I go into that doxel directory that was created, uh, do LS, we see we've got a few directories here. Um, so I'm gonna look at all the directories here, some hidden directories have been added. Um, there is a doxel directory and that's where the doxel configuration lives. Uh, effectively, the only thing you need to have to create a doxel project is this doxel directory. So. Um, if you want to create one with a very default stack and just kind of go with it, you just create a directory and type fin start and it'll create your initial project. But um, we'll look more into that in just a moment here. Uh, but yeah, docroot is our site. So if I go in here and we can see fin, again, that's the command to use uh, doxel, uh, fin drush ULI. And I'm just grabbing a, a login link uh, so I can get logged into the site here. So I'm just going to grab that. Go back to my docs installation, log in just to show you that is the site. So there we go, it's logged in. And uh, this is just a, a brand new site, so there's not a whole lot here. Um, so we go to the home page, you know, it's just a, the, the initial hello world Drupal 8 site. Um, as you can see, as we're tapping around, it's pretty quick. That's pretty fast uh, setup. Now this is running on Linux, although it might be misleading that I'm, I'm presenting from Windows, uh, but this is actually running on a Linux machine that's on my local network. So um, I do not have the VM. I am running native uh, Docker in this presentation on Linux, um, but I am, um, in this case, I'm just using like a, um, a static route for the site to point to my Linux machine. Um, yeah, so this is the base site. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty snappy, um, you know, just as you would expect on a local environment. Um, yeah, so going back to our presentation, uh, we could go through and, and look at each one of, and this might kick me back to the beginning. Ah, no, it didn't, great. So um, next thing I wanna talk about is importing an existing site. Um, so we run into this a bit. Um, I think this is just kind of more of the architecture, but uh, for this next part of the demo, I want to go into uh, Pantheon because this is a, a very common um, hosting provider that uh, a lot of us use. Uh, before the presentation, I've created a South Carolina Drupal user group um, uh, site. And with this, I mean, there's literally nothing here. I mean, I've got a dev environment, nothing's on test, nothing's on live. Um, and if I go on the site, it's the same, I've already got it loaded here, but uh, if I go, just go to the site, this is just the Drupal 8 Yanami Food Magazine demo site. Not a whole lot going on here, um, but it's also on Pantheon and we got everything there. And um, the process that you would normally follow would be to clone this. Uh, I've already done that. I've already cloned the code uh, and I'll show you here. Uh, we'll go, because uh, this is still my Doxel project, my initial build. So let me actually go back a couple of directories and then go into this SC Doug group. So this is the, the project that I've already cloned. And if we just do an LS here, we'll see it's a normal Drupal site, Drupal 8 site. And if I see this, we've, you'll see that I've already added a Doxel directory. Um, so let's take a look at that. And if we go into the site, and uh, I've already pulled some of these files here, but this is the project that's loaded in PHP Storm. Let's see if I can't make this a little bit bigger. Where's presentation mode? Enter presentation mode. Tabbing between these will be fun. It'd be good if I could see what file name this is. Whoa, I don't know what happened. Just like full screened everything. I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, my screen on my um, display is now sideways. So that's interesting. The live demo was going too well. I know, I know. No, it's hard for you to see this, but my, my TV where I'm actually monitoring the presentation has now turned sideways. I, I hit some sort <laughs> of random hotkey in Windows to do this, and I forget what it is. How do I? Oh, boy. It's actually pretty hilarious. All right, so let's just try to keep uh, it. Control-Alt-Up. Control-Alt-Up. 
Oh God. Okay. Woo. That was, <laughs> that was fun. All right. So how do I thank you. Google. Okay, thank you. I couldn't Google. My mouse was like all sideways too. Um, how do I get out of presentation mode? Is the, is it, is it there? It's not there. View. Let's exit presentation mode. Are y'all able to see to read this? Okay, on the screen. It was easier to read in presentation mode, but it's readable in this at least. Okay, let me see if I can go full. It's not much better. I think it's ultimately just a font size issue. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me get that. Let me exit full screen. I think uh, Command Shift A. You just type font in and adjust it. See, see, other person in this call. What happens when you don't use custom uh, shortcuts in PHP Storm? I have to go add that uh, font size increase decrease as a shortcut. That's a pretty pretty handy one. All right, increase. Okay, so this is the uh, doxel.env file. Uh, this would be your file that uh, you would uh, commit changes to your project. So in this case, um, we have our doxel stack. Uh, so doxel is a concept of stacks, like pre-built environments. Um, we just have that set to default. Uh, doc root. So you can specify where your doc root lives, like we saw in the uh, create uh, or the, the new project example. Um, you know, we had a, a, a doc root directory. So in that case, we would specify doc root here. But since we are um, just using the root directory, we are just specifying a single dot for current directory. Um, CLI image, if you want to have a specific uh, command line image for Doxel, uh, since in this example we're using uh, PHP 7.1, we have the 2.4 CLI Doxel image in, in, in play. Um, so Xdebug, uh, by default, uh, it's turned off, uh, but Xdebug works with Doxel right out of the box. You can turn it on just by simply changing this from zero to a one, uh, committing that to your project, or overriding that value in your uh, Doxel local. .env. So this your local file would be uh, any custom settings that you want to have on your local machine that would not be um, committed back to the project. And I have a few examples of what that would be here. Um, so, but I'll go back to our env and I'll come back to the local. Uh, so we have, uh, for since we're doing a Pantheon project, uh, we're going to be using Terminus and the Pantheon site in our case is South Carolina Drupal user group. Uh, environment that we pulled from is dev. Um, this next line down here, we'll come back to this, but essentially this is our Apache uh, file proxy. Um, so we don't have to go out and download the file system from Pantheon. We can just serve everything from Pantheon. The only thing you need in your local environment is the database. Um, so then going over to our Doxel local. So these will be the uh, overrides that we would have in place. Uh, Terminus token. Um, this token was created solely for the purpose of this presentation. So you can copy it or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, it'll be deleted soon um, since this is being recorded. Uh, but uh, anyway, I have Terminus token uh, provided here as well as my Terminus email. Uh, so this would be uh, any specific uh, configuration to have. You can also, um, you have a, um, uh, a doxel.env that's also in your, on your local computer's uh, user like home directory. So this way you can just put your Terminus token and email uh, directly in that one file in your, in your doxel.env. EMV file that's in your um, home directory for your user on your local machine. And the benefit of that is that you would never have to go and place this in all of the different files. Um, you can just place it once there, and then every new project that you have would automatically have that baked in. Um, so you wouldn't have to actually go and create a doxel.local EMV. This would only be for if you're wanting to override any uh, configuration. Um, as mentioned, I am running off of a, a two um, machine kind of setup here. So I have uh, the site scdug.wjackson.site uh, is a live domain that will be routed to the site. Um, so I have that set up here uh, if I want to specify uh, what that uh, virtual host would be. So uh, in our new project example, uh, our virtual host is doxel.doxel. Um, because it just took the, the directory that it was in um, and then put a dot doxel behind the end of it uh, for your local environments. But uh, in this case, I want to, you can over 
that too. And that's what we're doing here. Um, I have basic authentication. So the, the site that will be created um, has a username password uh, with basic off being added to the site uh, when it's loaded. Um, I've repeated these variables, I actually don't need them here since they are the same values. Uh, but typically what you would have, um, instead of having dev as your, um, your primary environment, you have to set to live um, and then you can have set to dev or another multi-dev environment um, in your, your local.env. Um, same deal here, I've got the Apache proxy. I actually don't need this um, because I already have it included here and I'm not overriding it. So this is just kind of extra. Um, in case you wanted to change that. So like if, we, if we're pulling from dev, um, if we're pulling our database from dev, we'll probably wanna have you pulling from, you know, for our, our files from also from dev. Um, but this is here in case you wanted to update that to live or to a, to a different multi-dev environment if you, need, if you wanted to. Um, and then Xdebug, I have it turned off here, but if I wanted to turn it on for this particular project uh, on my own install, I'll just turn this on here. Um, and then update the project, but I'll leave it off for now. So um, let's just take a look at this. So let's, um, I've already cloned this down and we have uh, directory, so if I just do fin in it, and this again is the one command that you would typically use to initialize a, a Doxel project. Uh, and in this case, it uh, there's a bunch of custom scripts that are being, um, uh, fired here. We'll, we'll look at those uh, at the end. Uh, but effectively, we're going to go out to Pantheon, uh, grab the database. Uh, we're first going to build the environment just like we did before. So it's checking to see if there are first containers enabled. Uh, there are not since this is a new project and this is going to create those containers for us initially. Um, same deal. It's waiting for my, you know, the database to initialize. Um, we'll see this actually done here now, but um, and note how quick, how, how fast that was. Um, and again, it's kind of a small site, so there's not a whole lot to pull down, but uh, it is grabbing a database. Um, and here it's just crying at me because this version of Doxel needs to be, uh, and these have a, a new version of Terminus came out. So we got to make a commit here um, with a new version of, of Terminus. But, um, but again, note that Terminus is being installed and managed from within the container as opposed to the local machine. So it's all pre-baked into Doxel. Um, and then again here, that's letting us know that our site's complete. And if I shift and click that, what we should see is, hooray, you name me Food Magazine. So the same exact site that we've uh, created here uh, is just being pulled down. All of these files are being served from Pantheon. And if I go into the site and just to show you, and drush UI, and we'll notice too um, that with, uh, we actually have some extra code in place that's providing the base URL for the site. Um, so if we click this and log into it, we're able to log in. And yeah, so this is my local environment um, and it's running a site that I cloned from Pantheon and of course that happened. Whenever I log in, but I think that's any clear cache. But anyway, um, yeah. So let's look into a little more into the uh, code a bit. And I guess now will be a good time to stop and pause and ask if anybody has questions. Uh, feel free to ask them now before we dive into some of the custom commands. No questions from me. Custom commands are the best part. <laughs> All right, so let's dive in. So in this case, um, I'm actually going to, um, actually let's close everything here, close all, and let's take a look. So fin init, that was the first command that I ran. Um, we're setting the environments, which is when here is running the, uh, setting the environments and running container, um, some formatting things that we have here. And uh, effectively this is bash. And this, um, it actually, custom commands can be written with any um, language or with any language. Um, so in this, and by default, they're just written with bash, but I mean, you can use, I mean, Python or, or Laravel. I mean, really anything you like, uh, PHP scripts, I mean, Symfony, I mean, whatever you like, uh, whatever you prefer, you can write, use that to write custom command. Um, in this case, you know, our first thing we saw initializing stack is happening here. Um, so if uh, Docker is running, uh, it's gonna reset it. Um, and otherwise it's going to run up. Uh, we're waiting for MySQL to initialize. So basically just a really simple sleep 10 seconds here. Um, 
initializing the site. And then what we'll see here is that we're thin in its site. So this is a second custom command being run within the first custom command. So let's take a look at in its site. So in its site, uh, really simple. Again, just setting the environment that we're gonna run the following command with. And then this one's gonna be the container, um, which is being set here. And then the uh, command is refresh. So the refresh command is, is the, pretty much the only thing that's running here. And if we go look at refresh, uh, so this essentially is going to be where it grabs the database. Um, so again, we're setting the environment, uh, fly is false, element CV, uh, setting some initial uh, variables here. Um, and we're going to, um, yeah, basically just run through, and this is a bash script. Um, so we're gonna specify the site, which the Pantheon site is provided from uh, the environment. So we've got Pantheon site, which is the, the actual client name in this case. Um, the environment, which in that case is dev. Um, so if live's true, then we're setting the data here. Uh, so you can actually pass additional flags to this if you wanted to have, um, you know, refresh dev and and refresh too. So this refresh command uh, can actually be ran independently. So if I go back to my site and if I want to pull down and say a copy of the database from Pantheon, all I have to do is fin refresh and that'll happen. Um, probably should have added some content on the broad, broad site to kind of demonstrate that. But, um, but again, small database, so it happens pretty quick. Um, true live and existing sites probably have more data. So it'll take a little bit longer, but uh, still pretty snappy. Um, yeah, so here we're just setting uh, some of the variables, um, you know, project root. Some of these variables are provided by Doxel itself. Others are, um, you know, specified here. Um, and then in the doxel.yaml um, is where we're actually providing like CLI, where we're providing the, um, uh, the, the variables for site and for environment, and then initial or specifying them in your in your YAML file allows you to uh, then use them in your um, .env file. Um, so using these variables, we effectively um, you know, identify the live site, the the client, the environment, um, and then if we pass any spe you know special parameters to it. So in this case, like a, like a specific environment, um, like if we pass tacky and or you know dash environment, uh, we're able to uh, pass in like live dev or a specific multi-dev that we want to grab a, um, a database from. Um, and then everything else here, um, I won't go through it line by line, but uh, effectively it's using Terminus to uh, reach out, you know, check to see if the environment is uh, awake. If it's not, then it'll wake it up. Um, and then it's doing, uh, you know, getting the database connection, grabbing a database dump. Um, and then uh, importing database. So then we're just using Drush to, um, to, to import that file. Um, yeah, and then this other spot here, uh, so this rest of this code is if um, we were grabbing file assets. Uh, so you can still grab file assets, assets if you need to. Um, in most cases you wouldn't. Again, it just kind of depends on the specific job or task that you're working on at the time um, where you may or may not need uh, files, but you still have access to that option. Um, the idea of using the um, uh, reverse proxy is just to reduce the overall amount of assets that you would need on your, your local environment uh, to set up the project. And it just makes the initial setup process go a lot faster. Um, so I think most people would agree that that's probably a pretty pretty clever way of handling it here. Um, and then I guess looking into um, some of the add-ons, because I know we mentioned uh, like PHP MyAdmin. Um, the best place to go for Doxel documentation uh, is just actually always go here. It's docs, the Doxel.io. Uh, recently, there was a, an update with the documentation. So as you would see, if you Google, sometimes you might go to the old site, uh, docs.doxel.io. That is the new site. That is uh, the, the, the most current uh, source of information and documentation on the project. Um, so P, it was a PHP my admin. I think we just search for PMA. We'll find it. Yeah. So PHP my admin. Um, there's a couple ways you can set this up. Uh, we could do it manually. If you do it manually, you would just basically copy and paste um, pretty much exactly this uh, and put it into your docsl.yaml file, um, which we only have listed here. Uh, but um, there is the concept of add-ons, which is really cool. Um, so in this case, uh, you can just use fin to install it. So fin add-on install PMA. So we do that. It's having to go out and grab some of the containers. I believe I have some of these up to date already, but I might have to 
Looks like I had to get a couple of them. All right, so if I wanted to look at PHP My Admin, there, now we go. PHP My Admin's installed. Um, it's in locally, and yeah, I mean, it was just one line that I had to run from um, uh, from from uh, using Fen. And there's um, you know, there's no shortage of add-ons as you can see in the documentation. Um, if you go tools and integration, we have um, you know, solar integration, Blackfire. It's really helpful. Um, Mailhog, God, uh, Mailhog is a, is a lifesaver. Um, if you're not using that, you should be. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and actually, actually note too, that um, this one actually does not have an add on. So in some cases um, you would, you would actually have to go in to add it to your YAML file, uh, but all the documentation is very clear and it's pretty simple um, to get things started. Um, so um, kind of look at, and then see here, since we use the add on, it actually added it, uh, added that entry to our, um, our docs like in for us. So PHP and I and then all that configuration that we would have had to copy from the site. It's just done for us. Um, fake mail, fake email. Uh, this is mail hog. Um, this is pre-installed. So in this case, let's just take a look at this. Um, um, let's see mail. And then I should just be able to go to. Let's see, done. Did I not? Yeah, so I didn't finish complete the setup there, but um, effectively it's it's pretty simple to get things installed. And um, again, a lot of documentation on how to further extend this. Um, but yeah, going back to our refresh command um, or to our init and init site. So init site, um, because it just runs through the refresh. And then once the refresh is done, um, just let's just know that it's done. It gives us a, a, a nice message that's nice and colorful and gives us a link to log in. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Uh, again, there's a, a, lot, uh, a lot that you can use to, or a lot of different options for extending Doxel. Um, but those are just some of the ones that I like. Um, some of the architecture, again, we kind of just went over that. Um, you know, there's the, the bare minimum is a doxel directory, a dot doxel directory. Um, but some of the basic ones would just be a, a doxel.emv. Um, and if you have any custom configuration for PHP or MySQL, you can include that um, in your commands. In this case, um, we have a little more advanced setup where we're, we're including a few more packages. Uh, Drush in this example, a screenshot. Um, and then just some of the other files that we would have. So. Okay, and yeah, we kind of went over most of these files, but yeah, docs.env is used for, um, you would typically use this for just defining your global configuration. So these would be changes that you would be committing to your repository. Um, so if you have any sp special images um, or if you're using specific PHP versions or um, you know anything that you would want everybody working on the project to have access to, you would commit that to docs.env. Um, and then, uh, so, so similar to what you have, like, like a settings.local.php, Doxel also has its doxel.local, uh, uh, which we, we went over. Um, and this is an example of what's in docs.env. Uh, a lot of this extra code is just uh, demonstration code. Uh, so a lot of documentation with the code. Um, and this is from the uh, Drupal 8 installation. Um, as you can tell, mine wasn't quite as verbose, uh, but it does have a little bit of documentation in line. Uh, Docs.yaml, uh, this is gonna be closely or similar to like a doc, Docker Compose file. Um, effectively, it's used to kind of wire everything together, all of your services, all of the uh, different containers that you're gonna be using it, or using to um, you know, build your project. Um, and then any changes here should also be committed back to the repository. So if you installed something like um, uh, PHP uh, MyAdmin, um, and maybe you don't want to install that, uh, to your local, uh, just like docsl, the docsl.emv, you can also create a, a docsl-local.yaml um, and then have very specific configuration for your, your local, so like specific containers and like that. If you want to have overrides for those, those global settings, you would do that in a docsl-local.yaml. So again, this is similar to what that looks like and we've already kind of gone over that. Um, yeah, so custom commands again, uh, by default, they're bash scripts. Uh, you can have you know, any amount of custom commands you like. Uh, they can be written in any language. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be bash, it can be anything. Um, and your, your commands, you would want to have them um, 
committed that to the project. Uh, but if you want to have, say, a command for Doxel that you want to have on your machine, uh, but maybe not necessarily commit it back, uh, there's also in your um, home directory, you also have a, a Doxel directory there. That's where that Doxel.emv for everything, for your global settings lives. Uh, there's also commands directory. So you can actually add global commands there, um, and they would be available across all of your Doxel projects installed on your computer. But you wouldn't have to commit them back to the project, which is pretty neat. Again, custom, custom commands can be anything like in this case, it's just a Pantheon example. Uh, so when should you not use Doxel? Um, if you're running a, an OS other than Linux, um, I mean, you would wanna, that's actually probably a miss, miss I should probably remove that. Um, I but, that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's better. It works better in Linux for sure. So, um, you know, again, kind of going back to Mac and Windows, if you're using Mac and Windows and you're running it native to, to either of those operating systems, use the VM. You'll just like life better um, in those cases. Um, if you're using Linux, you native support, and it works great. Uh, hence why I've got this weird setup trying to, to use Linux and Windows. So. Um, in production. I was going to say, I'd, I'd say the Docker for Mac is actually at this point really stable and and a great option it's good i mean it still has uh, a little bit of performance hit to it um and it's i think docker the, the vm option is going to have the best support more people are probably using uh that than docker for for mac um in that setup not that there's not and you certainly can use docker for mac um but seems to be a little bit more supported with the uh, VM side of things on Mac anyway. Um, and then production hosting. So like you wouldn't want to use this for production hosting. Um, there are some options for hosting containers on production. Um, like for our example, we were using Pantheon. So you would still let Pantheon do its thing that it does great. Um, then you would just use it. You would use Doxel for managing your local environments. Uh, future roadmap. Um, so where is Doxel going to go down the road? Um, so building more inter our automated interaction with Acquia, um, Pantheon, and Platform SH. Um, so all of these op all of these providers have um, an API uh, to to basically work from. So Pantheon, you know, is going to be Terminus, uh, Platform SH. I think it's just Platform CLI, um, Acquia. I know they have one. I forget what it is. Um, I think oh, we have CLI, but, um, but effectively using all those those available um, services in order to build a more um, automated interaction with building these. So, like as we saw with Pantheon, I had to go in and script everything with, with custom commands in order to build it. So, down the road, we're going to have more automated uh, interaction with those. Um, so that you know, if you're using Pantheon, getting started or importing an existing Pantheon site will be very easy. Um, and so. Some of the other PHP images are using them or making them smaller, um, so that's it's just more efficient on your machine, takes up less space, uh, and uh, condensing them will also make it easier to modify. Um, and then adding some new images, so things like Nginx, um, you know, upgrading the version of Solar that we're using, uh, upgrading Varnish. Um, so those are some add-ons that uh, are going to have some some updates coming soon. And the big one being Nginx. Uh, so Nginx. It currently will work with Doxel. Um, I've got a project where I'm using Nginx and Elasticsearch and have a completely automated installation of the site um, using Doxel. Um, but it's not something that is officially supported. Um, but as you know, Pantheon runs on Nginx and we really like Pantheon. So there's, um, they're moving to having some official support uh, for Nginx very soon. And that will likely come out um, around the same time they have the automated interaction with Pantheon. So, um, so yeah, um, that's it for the presentation. Uh, if you have questions, um, doxel.io, a great place to visit that has all the documentation there. Um, and again, doxel and Vagrant, uh, if you're currently using Vagrant and you want to give doxel a shot and you're worried that Vagrant's going to get in the way, um, we have a great blog post at canopystudios.com that helps you get that straightened out. And again, if you have questions, you can feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, um, GitHub, uh, or Drupal.org, which that would be weird if I got a message on Drupal.org. I think Twitter would be a way to handle it, but there if you want to follow me. So but yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, if anybody has questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Yay. There's a clap directly into the mic. <laughs>